Ladrea Wilson and I serve as the Quad City Chamber CEO. It is my honor today to introduce our Mayor for Bedford. Mayor Robert Bob S. Gallagher was raised in Bedford. He graduated from Bettendorf High School in 1987 and received his BA in Communication Studies and Psychology from the University of Iowa in 1991. He received his JD from Marquette Law School in 1994. And in 1996, he returned to raise his family and to practice law here in Bettendorf at Gallagher Millage and Gallagher PLC. Bob and his wife Jennifer have a total of five children. Bob has served the city of Bettendorf and the Quad Cities community for over 20 years. In 2004, Bob was named Volunteer of the Year by the Bettendorf Chamber of Commerce. In 2008, he received the Sheldon Citric Leadership Award for extraordinary leadership and distinguished service to the Quad Cities. That same year, he was named Quad Cities Area Leader Under 40. In 2013, Bob was inducted into the Bettendorf High School Hall of Honor. He is immediate past co-chair for the Mississippi River Cities and Towns Initiative. Bob currently serves as the chair for the Bi-State Regional Commission, Scott County Emergency Management Agency, Waste Commission of Scott County, and Joint Contract Sewerage Committee. He also serves on the board of directors for Scott Emergency Communication Center, Bi-State Regional Transportation Policy Committee, Eastern Iowa Community College Foundation, and the Chamber's Regional Opportunity Council. Bob has served as Mayor's Bettendorf since 2012, and during his tenure, the city has experienced incredible growth in both residential and commercial sectors, while continuing to provide excellent city services in a financially sound manner. Bob is dedicated to helping Bettendorf reach its fullest potential. I hear that the staff has recently started referring to him as the best shaved mayor of the Quad Cities. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to, honor to introduce the Honorable Thank Mayor Gallagher. Thank you so much, Ladrina, and the Quad City Chamber for being here today. I appreciate you. Thanks to the BBN, Bet North Rotary, Bettendorf Kiwanis, and again, the Quad City Chamber of Commerce. They did an awesome job in helping sponsor and put together today's event. A uh, great example of continued partnerships within our community. Let's give a round of applause to the aisle and the staff here. They've done an awesome job. Lunch was great. Thank you, Nancy. Everybody in the back, thank you very much. Great job. Always fun to be here. Always a great uh, time, and they do such a good job. Uh, as you know, this is another example of a partnership. The city owns the building, but it's run by the Isle of Capri, and it's a great partnership. Nancy Ballinger and her team have always done a spectacular job, so thank you so much. Before I get started, I want to thank my mom and dad, Bob and Sue Gallagher, here in the front. Yeah, babe. My wife, Jennifer, thank you very much for being here. Thanks for the support. Over the last 12 years, there's no way we could have gotten done what we did as a city and allowed me the time to help with this wonderful team without their support. And I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, offer a, a congratulations and a big thank you today to the person who has for 12 years put these slides together, made me look good up here because of the work of the city department heads and staff. They do an excellent job. But Lauren Haldeman puts all this together for us. And she has been our information officer my entire time. Lauren is going to retire. This is Lauren's last mayor's message. Lauren Haldeman, thank you. Never one for accolades, always liking to be, likes to be in the background, but we salute you today, Lauren. It is my hope that this is not my last mayor's message. November, we're going to figure that out, so make sure it's not my last mayor's message, please. Uh, we are now live on YouTube, so text those folks at home who might want to hear the good news of the city of Bettendorf and let them know we are rocking live on YouTube right now. I've got more microphones strapped to me than I ever have. Each year we get another one, so we're, we're learning. So let's talk about the state of the city of Bettendorf here in just a minute. I'm sorry, I've got to introduce all kinds of people who are here. So first, the Bettendorf City Council, the folks who make this long-range plan, the folks whose vision we follow, the folks 
who continue to create great policy for the city of Bettendorf are here. Frank Baden, Lisa Brown, Scott Nauman, Jerry Sexer, Bill Connors, Greg Adamson, and Nick Palzinski, our new Fifth Ward Council person. Nick, welcome. Our city administrator is Decker Plain. Our assistant city administrator is Jeff Ryder. He's also our director of economic development. Our library director is Jillian Ashelman. Kim Kidwell is our director of culture and recreation. Keith Kimball couldn't be with us today. He's got a good reason. He's in Des Moines lobbying our state legislature to help us with some of the issues we have back at home. He's with our friends from Davenport talking about juvenile crime. Kathleen Richland is our HR director. Mark Hunt, the director of community development. Brian Schmidt, the director of public works. Jeff Ryder, our economic development director, wearing two hats. Our city attorney is Chris Curran. Troy Said is here representing Chief Kenorick of the Fire Department, Assistant Chief Troy Said, and Jason Shad is here. He's our finance director. He's the guy with the team who's been working harder than anybody over the last 30 to 40 days trying to figure out how we can put together a budget thanks to our friends, friends in Des Moines. <laughs> we are blessed to have great partners in the room, including the mayor of Davenport, Mayor Mike Madsen is with us. The mayor of Rock Island, Mayor Mike Tomes, is with us. Sitting right next to each other, across from the mayor of East Moline, Reggie Freeman. Gentlemen, thank you for your partnership. Thank you for your collaboration. Thank you for your friendship. We have great government offices represented today from Senator Ernst's office, Joe Krenzlek and Michelle Beck, from Senator Grassley's office, Penny Vasek, and from Congresswoman Miller Meek's office, Rachel Anderson and John Kaufman. They're here at the table in front. Thank your bosses for us. Thank you for all you do. We appreciate you. Anybody who's anybody, I think, at the Scott County Board of Supervisors and otherwise is here, and I appreciate it. We have a great working relationship with the county. These are friends and colleagues with whom we, we meet all the time to tackle all kinds of different issues. As that board continues to change like ours does, we continue to build those relationships. I'm a big fan of our Scott County Board of Supervisors, and I'd like to introduce them to you right now. Chairman Ken Beck is here. John Maxwell. Tony Kenobi, who's now our treasurer. Gene Dixon, a board member. Ross Poshchin on the board. Rita Rawson on the board. Rita, welcome. And David Farmer our financial specialist from the county, as well as Mahesh Sharma, the county administrator. So all of those folks are here from the county. Give them a round of applause. We really appreciate all that you do and your partnership. Thank you. All right. On to the business at hand. I'm pleased to share with you today that due to the fine work of our department heads, our city administrator, and the great staff in the city of Bettendorf, we are financially sound, safe, flourishing, innovative, inviting, transparent, and communicative in the city of Bettendorf. And we're going to be communicative today to tell you all about the great things that are happening here and some of the challenges and obstacles we face as we go into the budget season to try to get done some of the great things you've asked us to do in the coming years. Welcome. We're glad that you're here. We always start with a vision because every day, that's where the City of Bettendorf employees start. This is where we want to get all the time. And we're, there's purposeful work behind this. So I appreciate the fact that you let me talk about this each and every year. But we want to be a livable community with rich educational, cultural, and recreational opportunities where we enjoy a vibrant riverfront and a growing competitive business advantage. We want to be a great place to live, work, and play, invest, and visit. We get there each year through a purposeful procedure we call goal setting. Three days down at City Hall where we work under the five goals of the city we'll talk about in a minute to come up with where we're headed in the future. What are our long-range goals? What are the policies we'd like to change? How are we doing business? We work with our department heads, our city administrator, 
and a consultant. This is purposeful work, and that keeps us on track so that each and every year on everybody's desk, we can get this color-coded strategic plan of our high and top priorities. We work the plan that we put together through this process every year, and we try very hard to fit those priorities into our budget. And Jason did an awesome job, but now he's got version two and version three of the budget he's working on, so we'll see how we get there. But these are the five goals. They've remained the same since I've been the mayor. The bottom basement I talk about, which is providing a financially sound city with excellent city services. The rest of it's gravy, but we have to start there. We have to be able to provide those services our residents require in a very financially sound manner. We also want orderly growth and quality development. We're going to talk some about that today. We want a destination for entertainment and living in the downtown. And you can see that transformation taking place with great plans for the future. Obviously, we want to grow our current businesses and attract new business, and we've been doing that. When we talk about some of the permitting and some of the things that we're doing in community development, you're going to see numbers attached to this success. All of that leads to us becoming a premier place to live in the Quad Cities, to work, play, invest, and hopefully visit. So the growth of the city has been phenomenal, and we have been very blessed because about 80% of our new growth comes from new houses and new commercial buildings. So we're fantastically blessed to be flourishing. We continue to work on a new program that is a formal cyber awareness and training. So we've all had to go down on a computer and take all this. I think we all got it done, right, City Council? Yeah, yeah. So I had to, you know, we could send some text messages and some nudges, but I think we're, we're way up the list now, Jason. So tell the guys in IP, IT we're going. We got it. <clears throat> We also migrated over to Microsoft 365 for improved cybersecurity and enhanced employee collaboration. And we're modernizing the information technology systems to eliminate some of the security vulnerabilities, the number of printers and all kinds of things, so that we can do the best that we can to protect all of the information that we have in our system here at the city of Bettendorf. We're also engaging with grassroots organizations. We're gonna have our IT people come to the BBN and give their presentation to help small businesses with security tips. So maybe the Rotary or the Qantas may want to sign up. If there's other folks who want that information, we want to share it with you. We believe that that's part of our role as your city stewards of information, money, and <clears throat> the security or the uh, services we provide to you in Bettendorf. City Council has talked a lot about new development and how we've kind of changed from 150 single family homes to some more apartment style living, condominiums, side-by-sides, townhouses, um, some of the <clears throat> retirement communities that we've had come on board. And they can go through town and they can say, boy, that is awesome, we really like that. Or boy, this one, I don't, I don't like it, but they don't necessarily know why. We're gonna go through with a consultant and talk about these density, parking, open space, setback, all of these things so that we can put together our comprehensive use plan with our friends at the Board of Adjustment and at Plan and Zone and kind of move through a revamp of our comprehensive use plan and associated zoning ordinances. So that is an ongoing process. RDG is our consultant. We hope to have a deliverable to City Council by the end of this year that will promote development patterns that complement Bettendorf's existing neighborhoods and commercial industrial areas. So this is something that we continue to struggle with and work on. So if you've got ideas, we'd love to hear from you throughout this process. There will be time for public comment purposefully set up and organized, but we'd like to hear from you informally as well. This is part of hearing from you. We're trying to reach you in a manner that you want to consume information. We have made drastic improvements and changes to the way we communicate. So take out your phones right now. Take out your phones. Seriously, go to bettendorf.org slash be in the know. Sign up at Alert Iowa, not only for information on security and safety, but you can sign up for all kinds of other things. Like you can figure out when the mayor's message drops and what's it's about. You can figure out parks and rec. You can opt into all kinds of stuff. Go to be in the know on Bettendorf.org. Go to Facebook and follow us. Follow us on Twitter. Our YouTube channel is up and running. We keep dropping stuff. We're live on YouTube right now. 
Subscribe to that channel and you'll know when the city is trying to communicate something of value to you. Also, check us out on LinkedIn. Our HR department does a ton of recruiting on LinkedIn. And we now have some new TikTok folks, especially the library. We'll talk about that in a bit, but they love doing their TikToks at the library to reach their audience. This is a great opportunity for you so we can reach out to you and you can decide through these platforms what types of communications you want and how you want to consume that communication. Take a look. I think you'll be really pleased. In fact, we've done this mayor's message now for three years, Denise Enfield right up here in front, kicking butt with me each month. She always comes up with great ideas and helps me look good on camera to explain something really cool about the city of Bettendorf. And how it started with COVID information. We did it on a daily basis there for a while. We kind of got sick of seeing each other and saying all the negative. Now we get to do so many cool things and talk about so many things that are happening in our community. Great examples behind me of the great people we get to talk to about cool stuff. So it drops every Friday at noon, every Friday at noon on Facebook, Twitter, and our YouTube channel. So check it out. There are about three to four minutes. We've learned how to do this over three years from all our consultants saying that one's too long or that one's too short. It's pretty cool. So I really hope that you take advantage of learning from all the people I get to interview. Most of the time, it's just me asking questions of the cool people, the intelligent people who do great stuff in our community. <clears throat> We talked to you about the signage that we had in the city, and we talked about the derecho last year. Now we continue to budget in changes in the signage and the look and feel that you get when you come into Bettendorf, creating that sense of place, a feeling of where you are. And one of the cool things we're going to have is this downtown water feature in that I-74 um, pond there. We'll have continued work on signage coming in and out of downtown. We worked with our friends, Ryan Jancy at the DBO. Your sign downtown coming in and out says downtown, Bettendorf. There's a way finding feel that we're going to continue to work on as the budget allows moving forward. We continue to be rated extraordinarily high in the provision of services through the National Citizen Survey we do every other year. We're very pleased with the enterprises that provide services within the city. Great facilities, great people, and great partnerships have really changed this landscape. We are so excited about the landing coming in the 2024 season, a brand new water park followed by the ice rink. So we're having a great time planning that. We're trying to figure out how to make all these parts work, but that could not happen without a partnership between the YMCA and our giving community, philanthropic organizations who pump money back into our community. It's about $6 million from each three of those pots to get this done, and it's going to be cool. It really is going to be an awesome thing for us all to celebrate community-wide. Additionally, we continue to collaborate with the YMCA to bring no, uh, more youth activity and different youth activity to our area. Is that they have gone fine free. Studies that show that the folks of, of lower income found an impediment to f paying fines or doing the things that wouldn't be necessary to get that information, get that technology, get that learning experience from the library. So the library has gone fine free to further their mission of providing information and ideas for all. They've also introduced non-traditional learning and fun kits like steam kits, outdoor activity kits, and they have a seed library where you can donate seeds to the seed library or you can take other seeds and go home and plant your garden. This is an effort to have community gardens and the library supports you in that non-traditional library thing. If you haven't been to the library, it's changed. The way we went to libraries and dual dec Dewey Decimal Systems and card files, I'm telling you, it's all different. And our library stands at the cutting edge of doing things new and innovative. The super big stuff has been great too, like the concert series, Summer Reading Program and Discovery Fair all had record numbers last year, some better than the pre-pandemic numbers. So at least get to some of these. I'll see you at the concert series. My wife and I love going over and listening to music on Thursdays. Get out there and enjoy the cool things the library is doing right there at the Learning Campus on Face Field. Now, I told you that they joined the world of TikTok. They've got an ever-increasing amount of followers, all kinds of kids. They're laughing over here in the corner because we said it couldn't be done, and the library's doing it. They are tiktok and whatever that means. And I don't know if you do it, I don't do it, but kids are doing it, and they love going to the library. And that's the group we're trying to capture. 
the late grade school, middle school, and high school kids for the library. We've got all kinds of programming for them. Get them off the streets in between when mom and dad come home and the end of school. Great things happen at the library and we're pleased with their work. This council, the whole time I've been here, has said public safety is number one. We will make it number one. We will put money where our mouth is, and they have. Look at how many firefighters we have hired recently. Two in October of 2022, three more in 2021, and three more in 2022. You can see the chart at the bottom. We now are full staffed everywhere. We're doing the best we can to ensure the safety of everybody in our community. The calls have gone up 8 to 10% over the last three years. Mostly those are medical calls, which makes good sense because our population is rising at a percent and a half or so per year. The value of the homes is uh, rising at at least 5 to 7%. So as you grow, it makes more sense that you're going to have more people who need some of those services. And this city council has made this fire department and this police department a priority, hiring 16 new officers since August of 2018. We're looking to hire two more. I think that is open right now. Am I right, Kathleen? We're still open. We haven't closed that timeline. So if you know of anybody who would be a good police officer in Bettendorf, especially if it's a person of color or a female, we would really love to hear from you. Get those folks to our LinkedIn page. You can go to bettendorf.org. There's information there. There'll be some testing and then there'll be some interviews and we're gonna hire two more police officers and put them on the streets as soon as they're trained properly. The cool thing is we've gotten a lot of new young faces with great new ideas and we're very proud that we have 43 of our 49 officers with some sort of post high school education. Both the fire and the police department believe that's important. It's important to have somebody who's had to go to class with people who don't maybe look like them. It's important to have them living on their own, becoming more experienced in maybe the ways of the world. We find that those folks who have got some educational experience or maybe some military experience really can be a better officer earlier in their careers. So this is important for us to take a look at. And by proof of that, look at some of the awards that have been won. Officer Caitlin Stays was awarded the Optimist Club 2022 Respect for Law Award. Officers Tripp and Hansen received the Honorable Service Award for their activity in trying to save someone who was uh, suicidal on I-74. Officer Lance Wilden received the Honorable Service Award for his quick response to a subject suffering a heart attack. And Officer Neil Chapman received the Honorable Service Award for his quick response to a person suffering from a drug overdose. So all kinds of positives that come out of the great folks in our public safety. Again, something council's made a number one priority. Take a look at this slide. As growth happens, community development is busy. That's what this means to me. Over 4,000 permits. Again, we're at single family, home, averages around 150. Lots of new commercial, lots of new apartment buildings. What that means is when the developer comes in or the builder and they bring a plan, we have to review it. We then have to make sure that it fits code, city code, state code. We then have to go and make sure that they're building it consistent with the plans that meets state and city code. There's lots of activity in our community development. Mark Hunt and staff do a great job, but this is a, a lot of work for those folks. And one of the things that we were trying to do moving forward is give them some help in the form of a person. As we talk about the budget, we don't think that's going to be happening this year. Here are our top 10 public work projects. These are our capital improvement projects. You see Forest Grove, top two, a lot of that's federal money, but that's very important for us to traverse our community and get our visitors into Bettendorf safely and efficiently. You see our obligation to the I-74 corridor, and you see our 23rd Street resurfacing project, which is just around the corner. We've had some changes in public works. Brian Schmidt and his staff have tried to be more efficient and safe in our collection of your solid waste. No longer will we provide a 32 gallon tank. If you've got one, we'll still pick it up weekly, but we've moved to 64 and 96. That's because the arms on these trucks pick, up, pick those up and people were shoving too much in the 32 and then we'd have to get out and we'd have, which we're not efficient that way. And one of the things that we have to be under the budget constraints we have is efficient. Forest Grove and Middle Road, we've got phase one done. Phase two started yesterday. That intersection's being torn up and it's going to go through this year and in the next year, 23rd Street from Lincoln to Middle is going to get done. The Lincoln Road, 
Interchange will all be redone, so there'll be a time when that's closed. We're going to widen 23rd Street to put a turn lane into the landing near Middle Road, so that's going to happen, and it's going to be uh, a hot mix asphalt on top, just like Middle Road, so a very smooth driving surface there. This all leads up to 2025, when the Iowa Department of Transportation has moved into their third year of a five-year program, the compressed diamond interchange there, which will make it much safer. If you ever tried to get on I-80 going west to Iowa City or Des Moines, it's really difficult right there. It's pretty scary. This will be much safer, and we're pleased that our, our, uh, our friends at the Department of Transportation have listened to our concerns and moved it up. Thank you to uh, all of you who had a hand in that. Last year, Public Works and Community Development did something really cool. You can go to this website and figure out all of the construction projects. You can click on it. It's interactive. We had a GIS consultant work on it. So you can click on the project. In fact, we have a page or a microsite, if you will, develop and use for only the project by TBK Phase 2, so Forest Grove and Middle. You can go to this. This is a good snapshot, but you can click on these things. It'll tell you what's happening, how long the construction will be, all these detours, anything you want to know about a project, this is a really cool thing. Get on our new website. There's so many cool things happening there. We talked a little bit about our aging playground structures and how we did one at Devil's Glen, and we're going to do one next year at Meyer Park. That's continuing. This is the urban park underneath the bridge at I-74. Phase one is done. Phase two is under construction, or um, we're going to let that out, so we're going to have that completed around 2024. This is a great spot, and it's working really well just as we wanted. That's going to be your connector from downtown to the West End projects and to the riverfront access. So this is really cool. Uh, we continue to work on this. You probably saw that the elevator went from about $2.2 million to over $4.6 million. And with the changes being made in our state capital to our revenue through property taxes, we're not in a position to put that uh, on the front burner. So we've pulled that for now. We'll continue to talk about it. But at this point in time, this park is going to be really cool, and we'll continue to talk about the elevator and some other things when we, do, when we get to our budget. The old bridge is coming down in sections. You can see that happening around you. Um, so they're going to continue to do so. They'll be careful of the environmentally sensitive areas, especially the Mississippi River, so we won't be dropping stuff into the river. There may be some explosions on either side on land to bring down concrete and stuff in the future, something cool to look at. But you can see that progress happening all the time. So now let's take a look at moving forward. What do we expect, especially in our budget? Well, this city budget demonstrates the city's flexibility to handle those legislative changes as well as the inflation we all face, okay? It will take advantage of our continued growth. We grow at about 5% in the 100% valuation. So residential property taxes in Iowa get rolled back from 100% to something less than that, we'll talk about in a minute. And the levy rate the city applies to that for the revenue to do all the great things we do only applies to the rolled back number. We get that number from our friends at the state in October, and this year we built a budget around what they told us, which they changed last week. So we've gonna, we're going to work on this budget that continues to be an obstacle, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but this budget will do all those things we talked about doing, the comprehensive plan update, cybersecurity initiatives, parks and rec master plan, sewer infrastructure projects, the IT master plan, plan and the financial system replacement. We got a 30-year-old 30 30 old financial system that needs to be replaced, and we'll all be on a nice, more efficient system. So the innovation of the city continues. So let's talk about this impact of the change. So in October, we were told that the rollback would be 56.49%. So in other words, the mean house, $272,723, at 100% taxable value, we would see a, a huge revenue increase over what the state will roll it back to 56 or so percent. Apply the 56% to the $12.65 on the levy, and you get the revenue to the city to do everything we do. They said, okay, we made a mistake in how we calculated that. We were wrong when you told, we told you. We're going to roll it back to 54.65%. What that meant to Jason Schatt, uh, our finance director, and all of our department heads is 
We just lost $912,000. In our budget, that's a lot. Now what? We can respond, but there are more changes. Another one they changed was commercial property tax, which is rolled back at 90%, so much higher than residential, but now the first $150,000 of value in your commercial building is taxed at the residential rollback at 54 or so percent. So that's another $330,000. So from version one to version two, we're out a million two. How can we respond? Well, we can reduce what we were trying to do, right? We can make cuts. We can try to find extra income, um, gaming or sales tax or possibly grants, but that's not enough. We can increase the general fund through increased permitting fees and things like that. We're gonna take a look, but that's not enough. We could increase the property tax levy, but this conservative council has never wanted to do that. They only do that when they must, so we don't wanna get there. So let's take a look at the impact and the fees on our residential payers, and here are your three current versions of a budget. Now, with these changes, the state did give us until the end of April to certify a budget instead of the end of March. We were hoping they may give us until next year, but they didn't. So the first uh, version of the budget came out and everything everywhere, the city's tax levy rate stayed the same and the residential rollback was 56,4919. It would have cost the mean house of 272, almost $273,000 $8.82 per month. Now, with a change in the residential rollback, that's gonna to drop to $3.32 per month. So less than a cup of coffee. Budget three is an increase of a nickel on the levy, and you can see what a nickel on the levy does. Not much. $3.32 to $3.93. So this is a real struggle for this council, but we're gonna find opportunities and we're gonna make good choices, we'll figure it out. Because of the change in the commercial property, that 150 being taxed at residential rates, this is what would happen. We all are gonna save money on our million dollar business, uh, commercial building, that's great, but that revenue to the city goes down, so we have to do more with less, and we have to find ways to grow to take care of our population. So version two and three, you're about $50 less per month on that million dollar building. So here's where we take a look at the highlights of the budget. We're still at $12.65 here. It is possible that that moves to $12.70 or even higher when we continue our budgeting. We had a great budget that we all approved. And usually when I give this talk, I can tell you what the budget is, but not this year. So we've got some things to do. We've got, we're very fiscally sound. We have other places from where we can get money. We have a rainy day fund. We are fiscally sound. It's the budget moving forward based upon the revenue and the spending that has to fit that revenue for next year. So that'll be a challenge. But if you take that $273,000 mean home from Bettendorf and you plopped it in our other three cities, sorry gentlemen, I still love you, but this is my favorite slide. You pay 20% more in Davenport and certainly our friends on the other side of the river fight with their legislature more than we do. And those are my words, Reggie and Mike, my words, not yours. And, and, and they get stuck a little bit harder. So, it's still the best value, and we're very proud of that. Staff needs to be able to have that shown because that's who does that work. Looking forward, we've hired Jeff Ryder as an assistant city administrator. Who knows if this Mr. Plain character is ever going to retire, but he, he's starting to think about talking about it maybe someday. Our new commercial development at the TBK Bank Sports Complex is awesome. Iron T is going to open at the spring of 2024. We've got more restaurants coming, especially in the downtown. If you haven't been to Yoso, get over there. It's fantastic. Obviously, Verde, Trattoria, uh, Sporties, all those things that have been there forever, we thank them, but we've got some new offerings, including a Thai restaurant coming, some renovations coming to Duck Creek, this Malibu Jacks indoor amusement park, if you will, kind of interesting. We're seeing more people work from home and the redevelopment of those office spaces into cool things throughout town. We're gonna punch the sewer through under I-80 so that we can start to move forward for some growth area and possibly even some voluntary annexation into the city. And we're gonna use the CP rail money to develop those quiet zones throughout the downtown as best we can. That's what you can look forward to in the very near future. And 
So thank you very much for joining us. Thank you to our team who put this together. Thank you to Lauren Haldeman for your great work over the years. And of course, she is hiding someplace. Oh, in plain sight. Uh, but I do appreciate everything you've done. Thank you very much. Thanks to all of you who are partners in the room, and that's all of you. Whether you're here supporting Bettendorf, the city, the community, one of these wonderful organizations like the BBN, the Rotary Club, Kiwanis, or the Chamber of Commerce, thank you. I'll stick around if you have uh, some questions afterwards, but we're right on time, so I gotta get you guys out of here. Have a great day. Thank you for being here. <laughs>